the good life with me, Eileen. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living a good life right here on TGL Radio Show. We are opening minds, living differently in the world with love, tolerance, compassion, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m. Make sure you tune in. You never have to miss a show because you can go on TGLRadioShow.com. Yes, right now and every day and see what's going on in the studio, see uh, what you missed, and just kind of keep up with us because why? It's the good life. So we are here on Relationship Tuesday. I have none other than my two favorite guests of the week oh but i say that for each and every one of y'all every day so y'all aren't here another day so y'all don't know any better right uh i have dr tammy wilborn of wilborn clinical clinical services and uh ladies first so henry uh you gotta wait a second yeah, yeah so no dr problem. tammy tell us exactly how they can reach you Please. Well, good morning, everybody. I feel good like it's morning. been a while. I know. I like we were in construction last week or under construction. So uh, you can give me a call at 504-509-3995, 504-509-3995. Or you can email me at info at Wilborn Clinical Services. Or you can find me on Facebook at Wilborn Clinical Services. Yes, follow her now because she's amazing. Uh, Henry, uh, give us your information on how people can contact you. Uh, because we really honestly have so many people who call uh, the station and follow us on social media who ask to uh, uh, get in touch with y'all for your services. So All right. Let so us know. If you have an Instagram page, you can follow me on Instagram at Henry Jolly underscore counselor and also on Facebook, Henry Jolly. And phone number is 504 259 8671. That's it. That's it. I, I thought we, we knew how to repeat it. We oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm tripping. 504 259 8671. Speaking of, our theme for the week is motivation. And I'm really excited. Uh, if y'all uh, were wondering what happened last week, we were under construction. We have new segments for y'all. We have new uh, regular guests. We have all kinds of new stuff. And so one of the new things are going to be our affirmations. So going out on every uh, commercial break, you will hear our affirmations. So I'm really excited about that. And I had a, a lot of feedback yesterday. They're like, oh, I love it. So I hopefully you enjoy it. And there will be different for each day of the week. So if you're listening for yesterday's, they won't be. They will be different with regard to the theme. So I'm really excited about that. We will have um, a segment, uh, Date about dating and uh, I'm trying to figure out a name for this segment so if y'all want to like throw some uh, ideas out there for me but I want to know about your first dates I want to know about your your worst dates I want to know about your best date I want to know about you know an idea to do uh, with your significant other you know uh, you know ideas for dating just you know dating I don't want to say 101 but just like dating fun kind of you know just kind of an interactive thing and so we'll uh, actually carry this as well to social media asking you what was your worst date what was your best date what was your you know the the craziest date you've ever had or things like that so we will be interactive so we will have these questions going up throughout um uh our uh, you know just throughout time in general so make sure you uh drop your comments and drop your information and we will read them right here on the radio so you can follow us on all of our social media platforms that is at tgl radio show at tgl radio show so to jump into the show today's or this week's conversation is about motivation and so i want to switch it up a little bit because when y'all think about motivation relationships y'all usually think of <laughs> i know what henry thinks of henry what you think of i already know what you're gonna say what you think of motivation and relationships i already know what you're gonna say i don't even <laughs> know what i'm gonna say you tell me tammy as long as we've known him i'm curious to know what you're gonna say i don't know either what, I what you did know you me say when I start, me? yeah i thought you were gonna say motivation is sex oh <laughs> no now see that's see typical one women ah, that is. see that that's not my tammy, goal he's been here for years you know him. Ah, I, 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 that's I, messed up. But you were going to say that's no, that motivation. Is, yeah, I mean, that is guy's motivation, for sure. I mean, well, if we I'll holding the door, we saying, how you doing? Yeah, how about, you know, how about a night? That's really what we're saying. That's really what you're saying. Yeah. Well, today we're going to look at it from a little bit a different perspective. We're going to go through the five levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What motivates us in our general relationships with regard to all different level of relationships. So I'm going to break them down for you and kind of give you the background. I know y'all have studied this a, a lot more than I have, which is why I love having the two of you uh, on either side of me. You know, you book in me. You book. So... 
what motivates human behavior? And I found this article on VeryWell.com to kind of give you a short summary, and then they can kind of break down each level of it because it is shaped like in uh, a pyramid, I should say. It goes to say, what motivates human behavior? The hierarchy of needs is one of the best known theories of what? Motivation. And that's exactly what we're talking about. So according to humanist psychologist Abraham Maslow, our actions are motivated in order to achieve certain needs. Well, that's what you think, right? You do stuff because you're motivated because there's a need. Well, Maslow first introduced this concept of hierarchy of needs in his 1943 paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, and his subsequent book, Motivation and Personality. This hierarchy suggests that people are motivated to fulfill basic needs before moving on to other more advanced needs. And so while some of the existing schools of thought at the time, you know, tended to focus on problematic behaviors, Maslow was much more interested in learning about what makes people happy and the things that they do to achieve that aim. So as a humanist, Maslow believed that people have an inborn desire to be self-actualized, that is to be all that they can be. In order to achieve these ultimate goals, however, a number of more basic needs must be met, such as the need for food, safety, love, and esteem. So there are five different levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, We're going to take a closer look and go through kind of each level. And it is for for y'all who aren't looking at it. It's shaped like a pyramid. The first level is uh, physiological, which is breathing food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, um, and accretions. Uh, The next level is safety, security of body, of employment, of resources, of morality, of the family, of health, of property. Third level is love and belonging, uh, friendship, family, sexual intimacy. Uh, Number four is self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, respect by others. And last but not least, self-actualization, morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts. So with all of this being said, you know, I'd love to get y'all's two cents. Um, I'm going to read this last little paragraph before I throw it to you. There uh, is this, uh, this, uh, this tug of war and it goes between deficiency of needs versus growth needs. Uh, Maslow believed that these needs are similar to instinct and play a major role in motivating behavior. Uh, uh, Physiological uh, security, social, and esteem needs are deficiency needs, which arise due to deprivation. Satisfying these lower-level needs is important in order to avoid unpleasant feelings or consequences. Um, Maslow termed the highest level of the pyramid as growth needs. He said these needs don't stem from a lack of something, but rather a desire to grow as a person. So with all of that being said, I was trying to give the audience a little background about Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs because I know y'all know about it a little bit more and, you know, you go on to your little talk. Both of y'all like smiling and stuff. I'm looking at Henry. Uh, what are you going to... What say you, Henry? What say you, Henry? What say I? That was a lot. Yeah. To uh, digest. I feel like I need a book in front of me to... Okay, well, well let's start. I'll, you want me to break down? I'll go through yeah, yeah, each yeah, level yeah, of yeah, needs. Yeah, okay, uh, physiological needs. The basic physiological needs are um, obviously, well, I think they're apparent, but maybe they not be apparent to everyone. So those needs would be, or examples of, I should say, food, water, breathing, homeostasis. Like we need to be, say, a certain temperature. We need to breathe. We need water. We need food as a basic level of living. We need those things. Um And so with that being said, having those needs met or the motivation to have those needs met before you can really kind of do anything, how does that play for us personally? Personally, and I'm going to kind of throw it out there for each one of you to really give you something to chew on. How does that play in our society as well? If our basic needs are food, water, breathing, and homeostasis, what – motivation do we have to get those taken care of because you're like you know after you know certain you know maybe uh natural disasters or something you know oh people were stealing food they were stealing food it is one of the basic things they need food they had a motivating factor to steal food because there was none you know what i'm saying so you know it's kind of different than you're stealing you know food for your family compared to an electronic that you can't even plug in because there's no electricity. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, let's start with those uh, the motivation to take care of our, uh, as uh, Maslow's hierarchy would need to say, the the base level of need, which is food, water, breathing, and homeostasis. I mean, that's just sheer survival right there. I mean, you have to uh, know how to survive in this world. Um, You know, the world is kind of rough. Yeah, yeah, a tad bit. (laughs) 
So, you know, I don't think anything's wrong with that, you know, when those survival instincts kick in, you got to do what you got to do. You know, even if it's, I had another one, protecting a loved one, you know, that's, that's survival instincts right there that, that are not on that list. But, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do when it's time. Survival of the fittest on this So how motivated are you as a person? Or I should say, have you ever been in, in need of any one of these items where you were motivated literally to do anything to do it? Have, have you been in that situation? And if you aren't, obviously it's cool because I don't think I would want to be in that situation. But there are people living each and every day in this world who are in need of these b- very basic things that we take for granted. I'll I tell you what. Um, I know I do sometimes, so I don't know about y'all listening, but I do. I feel like that every day. I mm-hmm. feel like every day I'm in survival mode. I have to get up and handle my business. I have a wife. I have kids. I have myself. I have a mom and dad and brothers and sisters and stuff. So I feel every day I have pressure and that, that survival um, instinct kicks in where no matter how lazy I feel today, how tired I feel, I got a headache, on my back hurt, I got to get up and I got to get up and, and, and get this money. And um, not to flaunt it, but just to survive, to eat, to not worry to, about to other lights food, will stay on. To go to Costco with the kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, um, you know. I, I just feel like I, I'm too afraid to be, I'm too, I'm too afraid to be broke. I'm too afro- afraid to, to starve and, and things like that. You know, to not be able to provide and, you know, for myself and my family. So I, I feel that every day. Now, of course, somebody who really does not have anything, that's a different level of survival. But I still feel, you know, some type of um, uh, instinct to, to do what I need to do. Right. Dr. Wilborn? Yeah, I think that, you know, when you look at the, the very basic uh, bottom level of Maslow's hierarchy, physiological needs is what keeps us alive, right? right. Food, water, shelter. Uh, and so people's motivation to be able to um, take care of those very basic things are, are typically high because you need those things to be right. able to, to like survive, right? Yeah. Um, what's interesting, though, when I when I sort of transfer that into how that might show up in relationships is that, you know, if people are entering into relationships that are seeking the other person or that relationship to take care of these basic needs, wow. then sometimes it creates this healthy imbalance in relationships. And so you might be highly motivated to be in a relationship with somebody who can take care of that need. And so you might not be authentically engaging with that person mm. because what you're trying to do is really get a need met. You're not really engaging in that relationship because of, you know, some of these higher needs of self-actualization. And, right. you know, um, so I think that's when you think about relationship, yeah. I think that's the thing to be thinking about. I'll give you an example. I think about, you know, as a as a young person, my mother dated certain men, mm-hmm. for example, it was clear that Mr. Charlie was there to pay bills, mm. right? Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, my mother was a, a divorced woman. She had three girls. She was doing the best that she can. She was in survival mode oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the relationships that she entered into were out of necessity, mm-hmm. you know, so-and-so is here. And, and we she's knew not that. alone in the world. They're they're they're. Unfortunately, but there are many people who are find themselves in situations like that. Absolutely. And and again, because of the basic needs not necessarily being met, it didn't lead to healthy relationships. Right. You know, a, a lot yeah. of times uh, these men weren't the best men for her. They weren't certainly the best men for us to be in the house. And so uh, if you are motivated f- in a relationship because of a deficit. Right. Um, it doesn't lead to, like, authenticity in the relationship, and it doesn't lead to healthiness in the relationship. So with that being said, uh, my question to both of you would be with regard to taking how motivated, and and you're saying, I don't even know how how to present the question, but so is it that it's something that we have got to internally take care of ourselves so that and be fully motivated to take care of our, our food, water, you know, breathing those basic living things that we need to <gasps> to stay alive so that we aren't creating a codependent relationship that we have 
interdependent relationships, mm-hmm. like you like to say, uh, Dr. Wilborn, I stole that one from you. Yeah, I think I think when you are able to take care of the basic necessities of your life, it creates a space for equality in relationships. Mm. Um, if you're entering in a relationship because of a deficit and there is this need, and I'm not saying that we can't need other people because there is a healthy version of need, right? right? And I think the hierarchy speaks to that as you go higher in the hierarchy. Next one real quick. Yeah, as we go higher into the hierarchy, need becomes more healthy. But if you are um, in a space of need where it's deficit or it's lack, it doesn't really create a space for partnership necessarily. It creates a space for uh, dependency, like you talked about, or um, this imbalance of power in the relationship. If somebody knows that you're with them because you need them, mm-hmm. they may abuse that space. And so, well, it's funny you say that because that really kind of rolls into the second level, which is security and safety needs. You know, as you move up to the second level, you know, the needs begin to change. So the basic security and safety needs then occur. Financial security, which you know, because we're talking about basic human needs to, for our body to physically function. You know, stepping up to that second level really does uh, join into the financial security, the health and wellness, uh, the safety against, you know, accidents and injury where you're talking about taking care of, you know, physically taking care of your family, you know, maybe it, you know, how people motivated to, you know, purchase guns, you know, people motivated to, you know, obviously financial, you know, go to a job or have a second job. Or if you're not able to take care of your family, you know, you're you're motivated to steal or motivated to take it to another level that, you may not want to, but it's a basic human need that you 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 need. I mean, that's when a lot and of so, bad decisions get made. When, when you don't have those basic needs, you you your judgment gets really clouded, and uh, you're motivated on a whole different level. A, yeah, yeah, you're motivated to do wrong things, but in your mind, you're doing the right thing. Right. So. Right. Right. Dr. Wilborn? Um, I I mean, I definitely agree. I think a lot of bad decisions, and and particularly bad decisions around who we choose to enter into relationships with. Mm. And so, um, you know, we just, October was Domestic Violence Month. And so I'm thinking about uh, people who engage in relationships with people who at the outset may not necessarily see this person as abusive, but again, um, may enter into a relationship with somebody who, becomes violent and abusive and that person uses jeopardizes the safety of that individual or if there's children involved jeopardizes the safety of the children and the family because of this abuse of power this imbalance of power and so going back to henry's point about the making bad decisions i think um Again, when there's this huge deficit and there's this huge need in place, I think a lot of times people do make poor judgment, and then it creates uh, negative consequences down the line, and I think you have to be careful about that. So with that being said, I um, I don't want to go to the next level. The next level is social needs. I don't want to go to that level quite yet because I want to stick with this with regard to our community. If we can kind of see how this relates to our social ills and our community. Uh, We are motivated to do things because of a, a physical need because when you are thirsty and your body needs water, you are going to look for any way on God's green earth to get water because you physically need it. You know, uh, when you put people, um, I mean, I hate the worst way to, to say it, but uh, what's that? What was that movie with your girl with the fire with the um, with where they were in the different uh, shoot? I'm the worst person. Oh, yeah. No, the yeah, movie. Watch movie. Come on, with one, you on the other side. The girl with the, with the three parts. Who, like, you know, they prick somebody from every precinct. Y'all know. And they had to fight to the death. And the one person won. And it was the... Somebody call in and tell me what this dog on movie is called. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I have no idea. You got, like, six people looking at you like, what? Well, then all of y'all have problems because I don't even watch movies. And so, y'all know what I'm talking about. No. Y'all do. Where they all from a different precinct. And they have to go fight... And they, and they have a, a couple from each precinct that wins. Resident Evil? I don't know. Thank you. Lee knows it. Of all the people in the thing, Lee knows it. What is it? Yes. Chasing Fire. I mean, that was one of them. With the, yes, the girl with the bow and arrow. What is it? 
Hunger Games. Oh, Thank yeah. you. So- okay, well, you none of y'all precinct. act like I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, they were all from a precinct, and that's how they got. There were 18 precincts. Oh, I, I know. I, I saw that. Something. That's so, okay, movie. Hunger Games. Right. But movie. think about the motivation of Hunger Games to live. You know what I'm saying? The mo- Now, you, you are so motivated to live that you kill other people. And if we look at the idea of Hunger Games, and you know what? I'm actually going to put that on pause because Lee's going to make me take a break. But I want y'all to think about that. The idea of Hunger Games and the motivation in our society society that we are motivated to do things that we may not ordinarily ordinarily do clearly but it's because we don't have our basic needs met so when you don't have certain basic needs left and i don't even mean like basic i mean like humanitarian needs you know physio physiological like just <gasps> needs when they aren't being met you can't even your motivation is just on a different level so i want you to open your mind to living differently in the world because if we want to create a new world a new life a good life we need to make sure that everyone is taken care of yes so we are going to we have our, our new little uh, our new segment coming up i'm really excited about it so i hope y'all enjoy Relationship Tuesday Affirmations with Eileen. Repeat out loud or in your mind to open your mind. I am loved unconditionally exactly as I am now. I am peaceful, protected, and secure. I give and receive love effortlessly and unconditionally. I accept everyone as they are. I forgive myself and others. I am open to healthy and nurturing relationships. By repeating these affirmations, we begin to change our thoughts and our lives. Let's walk into the good life together. Hi, I'm Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, owner and chief clinical officer of Wilborn Clinical Services and founder and producer of the annual Black Women's Wellness Conference. Wilborn Clinical Services provides professional and culturally responsive clinical services to meet the needs of a diverse community. Located in the historic Farmore community, we are minutes away from downtown New Orleans. If you're an individual, couple, or family looking for counseling in a warm, non-judgmental environment, call 504-509-3995. Are your pre-licensed counselor looking for clinical services? supervision, interested in professional and personal development opportunities, or need an experienced consultant, call Wilborn Clinical Services at 504-509-3995. Find us on the web at www.wilbornclinicalservices.com. Follow us on Facebook at Wilborn Clinical Services. Do it today because at Wilborn Clinical Services, we build healthy community one client at a time. Hi, this is Bishop Henry Bolden. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to personally extend to you, your family, and your friends this invitation to join me for worship. That's right. Come experience God on a whole new level. Join me at Perfecting Life Church this week. Make weekend plans right now. Join me uh, for our Tuesday night life service each and every Tuesday night at 6.45 p.m. Only 45 minutes. Come as you are dressed comfortably. Bring your family and friends with you. Also, don't forget our electrifying Sunday morning worship experience at 9.45. That's right. Come as you are and watch God do something incredible for you. Join me. Perfecting Life Church, 2025 Whitney Avenue in the beautiful city of Gretna, Louisiana. Again, that's 2025 Whitney Avenue in Gretna, Louisiana. Listen, Perfecting Life Church is a place you can call home. Bring your faith, your friends, and your family. God bless you. The Good Life Radio Show is brought to you by Carter Business Development. For information, advertising, rates, and packages, find us online at tglradioshow.com or call 504-400-7127. Open your mind and grow with the Good Life Radio Show today. Welcome back to 
Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living a good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds, living differently in the world with love, tolerance, compassion, and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 AM. Make sure you tune in. If you ever do miss a show, you can find us online at TGLRadioShow.com. TGLRadioShow.com. I'm so excited about today's, um, not today, but just the entire week's uh theme it is motivation we're going to look at it from so many different angles you always think motivation is positive it's not always positive sometimes it is sometimes it's not sometimes it 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 can encourage you to do things that you would not ordinarily do based on your needs so since i had the two great minds in the studio today i wanted to look at uh, our motivation for needs uh, regarding uh, maslow's hierarchy of needs and so i have dr tammy wilborn of wilborn clinical services in the studio you can find her on wilbornclinicalservices.com any day, every day, right now, but well, after the show. Uh, you can also, we also have in the studio, uh, Henry Jolly. He's our resident relationship therapist, and I do not remember his phone number off my top of my head, so he's going to give it to you right now. Henry. I remember it. 504-259-8671. Once again, 504-259-8671. I'm going to, I'm going to have to know. No, you'll be here. So, uh, <laughs> before we went into the break, I was trying to remember a movie that everybody thought I was crazy, but none the, nonetheless, we remembered it. Uh, thanks, Lee, The Hunger Games. And so we wanted to kind of relate that to Maslow's, uh, hierarchy of needs because they, they, we went through the bottom two, which was physiological, breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, accretions, uh, safety, security of body, employment, resources, of mor- uh, morality of the family, of health, of property, security of all of those things. And so with that being said, I brought up the question of the Hunger Games and, you know, how does that relate to kind of like society now and why as an entire society we should be motivated to help one another so that our basic needs can be met. And so, therefore, your motivations in life change, and we can all start focusing on level three, which would be love and belonging, uh, uh, friendship, family, um, the the fourth, self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect for others, uh, respect for yourself, and self-actualization, morality, creativity, problem-solving, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts. And not that these all go in order, because you can mix. They're going to, you know, but in general, there are certain things that are motivators in life. And so uh, I have you nodding your head over there, Dr. Wilborn, so I'm going to th- toss it off to you. Well, I guess when I think about, like, our community in particular, you know, one of the major issues that we are plagued with in, the com- in our community in particular is crime, right? And so um, there's a lot of talk about addressing the crime issue with, you know, putting more police on the ground right. and, you know, taking a more uh, penal approach, I guess, punitive approach to addressing crime. And really, it's important to understand, like, the underpinnings of why people commit crime. And so, right. you know, what one of the things that I love that uh, Mary Lett Cantrell would talk about on her campaign was nothing beats a bullet like a job. A job, right. right? And so sure. you have a lot of people <laughs> right. who um, don't have – resources to take care of their very basic needs, needs. you know. So and, their motivations are different. And so their motivations are different. And, and you know, not having access to education, which is a right, right? I mean, that's not part of physiological, but it certainly is a basic need. If for the safety, of, of, for the two that we're talking about, the safety and security of employment, you have to have the education, have to, education. Get the, to get the employment. You so have, it's a basic need. Absolutely. It was, was not on this, partic- on this particular um image of the need of the hierarchy of needs is also shelter you have people who don't have adequate housing that's also part of those basic needs and so if we're going to look at if we're going to talk about community and also talk about motivation in that same spaces we have to understand that there are a lot of people in this community that are low-income uh underworked under-resourced individuals whose basic needs are not being met. And so you, you're going to have issues of crime when you have a population, a large population of people who do not have the uh, 
access to adequate resources to take care of their basic Basic needs, needs. take care of their families, take care of their obligations. So we're going to address crime. We need to address some of these other issues and not, it's not about putting more cops on the ground, right? Exactly. Exactly. Because you can put as many cops on the ground as you want, but if I'm starving and I don't have any water, your basic physiological needs, and even more if I don't, if my children don't, and I'm watching my, my, my children go through physical pain because they don't have food or their stomach is cramping or whatever, your motivation to make sure that their needs are taken care of are much stronger. Yes. And we and we criminalize low income people, right? When we when we when we think about some of the motivations and maybe some of the decisions that they make, that might be at times uh poor decision making right. um, rather than us taking an empathetic stance on trying to really understand where the decision making is rooted and what is the motivation if you have family or somebody that's trying to make ends meet it so maybe they're not making the best decisions rather than criminalizing those individuals again create opportunity for equal access to opportunity and resource leads to people being able to self actualize but right. if you don't give those basic uh, give that basic access to adequate resources, um, then you're going to have people who are going to have high motivation to do the wrong thing. Right. Because they got to take care of and do what they need to do, like Henry said earlier. And, and, and we're talking about it with, you know, with crime, but, you know, crime is also, I mean, for for me, this is also with drug use. Yeah. You know, and, you know, because, you know, there are certain certain whatever who you know will can see one area as one thing but can't see another area as something and i see them both together in my opinion um you know you know weed and crack is one thing but you know opioids is something else um they're all drugs okay so with that being said um when certain needs aren't being met and you're having an issue with you know your employment or you know taking care of things you're looking for a quick fix to not feel the motivation to take care of those needs. And so it may be to drugs or, you know, this, that, and the other, which we have found a lot of, you know. So it, it can, it, it, it's more than just one way. So if we start looking at what people's needs are and stop looking at them, like you said, as criminals, because everybody has these needs. That's y- such an important point, Eileen, is that we th- all have there's a needs. universality in these needs, that these needs aren't just true for some people that what this hierarchy of needs tries to represent is that there is a universal experience that we all have as humans to have these basic things. Yes. And so, again, going back to that whole trying to criminalize, don't criminalize people who don't have access to the things that they need to take care of themselves. Basically, when you're sitting at the very top of this hierarchy, you know, operating in that 1% of people who have who have it. Right. And, you know, and I don't want to down people who have it because, you know what, hey, I'm going to give you your credit for having it. But I will say, you know, some of us have been given um, opportunities in life that others haven't. Some have come in at a different stage in life than others. I mean, I have been quite blessed in my life, so I have nothing to complain about. I need to put one foot in front of the other and make it happen. And I'm going to be thankful for that. But there there are people who have, have had less opportunities and there are people who have had more and so there's going to be that for everyone. There's going to be people who have less opportunities than you, and there are going to be people who have more. Because, you know, we can say everything we want about being uh, born in the United States of America, but I'm going to be very honest. I would not want to be a born, born in, in, a, in, you know, maybe a desert somewhere or like a rainforest. Could you imagine me running a rainforest? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, you know, I like, you know, AC and stuff. You know, I'm just being funny, but it's true. And so when we, you know, can – and but they may enjoy it. Their basic needs are different than what we uh, perceive them to be. You know, they live in a rainforest. You know, they have tribes and, 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 and people of, of different backgrounds who love that living. And so it really depends on what your perspective is. But here in the United States of America, there are certain needs that need to be met if you want to eliminate some of these negative motivations. And until we all come together and realize that these are needs, and, and it's, it's also uh, taking care of our children in early uh, child in early uh, childhood education. I mean, I don't understand how that's not basic. But, you know, we, we want to put our children in school at five and six years old. I just like the majority of what you learn is from zero to six or zero to three, honestly. And so we're going to put them in at six and then you have a de- deficit and then you're asking them to go, you know, uh, 
uh, have these basic needs which haven't been met, but then go figure it out on your own? Well, how does that work? I got the solution. Henry, help me out. I've got the solution. Check it out. So I've been pushing on Facebook for a long time about the problem with a lot of what's going on in the world is, is lack of education. And I don't mean just, like, learning English and math and do they call, still call it social studies? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, all these, you know, different courses you take in school, I've been a strong believer in teach kids real-life stuff. So, for example, I don't understand why the 12th grade you should still be learning, like, more English and more math. I mean, haven't have we not had a chance to learn as much as we could? We couldn't squeeze that into a summer. If you can't write a paper, bye. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, come on, man. We in 12th grade now, so. But that's the point. Why are we not teaching lock, kids it, to? They should. To. Shouldn't be passing them to the next one. To look, not mess your credit up, live within your yes. means. Uh, the person you have a baby with is a big deal, so it really counts. You're stuck you know? with them for the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, man, right? like real life stuff. And so when you do get out in the real Interpersonal world. Interpersonal relationships. Yeah, all of that. So when you do get out, get out in the real world, you know that there are options. It's not just, okay, well, you finish high school, you got to go to college, you got to go to the Army, or you got to go get a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you have options, okay? And and you are in control of that. You don't, you're do not you not supposed to do what everybody wants you to do. Um, I have friends who their whole families have, have groomed them to be doctors and lawyers and stuff. Man, they finished school and decided they wanted to own their own uh, AC company. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to be a doctor or a lawyer, and mm-hmm. that's what that's the route they went and took. But when you're not uh, educating these kids and letting them know, look, there are options. You don't have to rob and steal just because that may be a background you came from. You can do better for yourself. Who wants to give up? When you really think about you know, people in jail and the decisions they make, I understand they got people in there that shouldn't be there, okay? But the people who know they should be there, why are you giving up your freedom? For what? I mean, ain't nothing worth that. I don't understand that for the life of me. So you're telling me you're a free person out here no matter how hard it is. You want to go sit in, in a place where you you don't decide when motivation? you wake up. when You you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what was the motivation? Just bad decisions. But I, I, think I know, but are, I'm saying what was the motivation to do the bad decision? The motivation. Or, 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 the, or, the, or the decision that has been criminalized. I want to put it that way. I think the motivation varies for different people. Exactly. But if they're educated and they know I don't have to do this and this is a bad idea, somebody got to tell you that. Um, Some people would have to tell you that. I I wasn't have nobody to tell me that. I saw it for myself. I knew I don't want to end up like that. No matter how broke I I am, I'm not going to rob nobody because what's the consequences to that? If I get caught, what's going to happen? I you get know killed, what? I'm gonna I'll go to jail. This and, and I really don't know all the facts of the case, so Good. y'all please don't, like, send me all kind of emails and stuff. Uh-oh. But do y'all remember the guy who went to jail? He was, like the, he was like the three strikes and you're out, but he had stolen so many candy bars or whatever. Dang, no. Long story short, there was a guy who, who got a really tough sentence because he had stolen food so many times or like candy bars or something like that. Yeah. I do not know all the facts of the case. I'm just giving it as a, hy- a hypothetical example. So nonetheless, let's just say that he was hungry. And so that's why he was stealing the candy bars. We're going to be a, make it basic. So if he was stealing the candy bars because he was hungry and he got caught every time because he's not a, a thief, he's just hungry and he's acting in he has certain behaviors because he's motivated to physically take care of a need because his body is painful um the he's now in jail but and he's now in jail and he's getting three meals <laughs> where he's not having that pain of hunger anymore and he knows he's going to be fed where else he's out on the outside he's beaten up and this that and the other he may have i'm, I'm just giving you the reality of situation I, I get it i mean and i'm not saying it's okay but i am saying if his basic needs were met on the outside and he had the ability to um get a trade get um a, a, get a education or get something where he could take care of i don't even need to go to the three four and five we could just stay on two and one and two today y'all um because that's what the basic that's where i'm with with the hierarchy of needs if he could take care of those things then he would never get to that point but eileen he still because well but, well, but true because then well no i am going to go back up because he would once he has those two those basic needs taken outside then he is uh encouraged uh 
internally to go do what? Have a family, uh, have friendships, go out with his friends, you know, his self-esteem, his confidence, uh, uh, g- uh, growing, going up the scale to self-actualization, you know, problem solving, lack of pe- uh, prejudices, acceptance of, you know, all these other things that you, you know, you know, finding your higher self and going through that process. But if those needs are met, and we can see how that just switched with him being hungry. Man, people's motivation really should be fear. Fear. Check it out. Check oh it out. I'm about to break it down. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, Dr. Wilborn, you're going to help me out with this. Check it out. So if this guy is so hungry, right, mm-hmm. he's like, look, I got I to gotta, I gotta eat. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take a chance and go steal. The consequences of that are bigger than just being hungry. So now you're going to go to jail now. So now, okay, you may get three meals a day. You lose your freedom. You lose your opportunity to see your family and friends whenever you want. I feel like the fear of that is bigger than you being hungry. Go out in. in have you ever been that hungry? Have you ever been hungry? That hungry? Man, I, I ain't, guess what? I'm not giving up, though. Have, have, have you, have you been ever that been that hungry, that hungry though? Man. Where where it's, where it's not just you hungry. No, but guess where what? It's that, okay, well, that's the point. I ain't giving up. But that's I, the point. I can't have a woman where, now where it's not just I'm you hungry. Come on, because man. I ain't then, doing that. Didn't I tell you his motivation was sex at the beginning of the show? I'm not doing nothing in this world. I told y'all the motivation was sex at the beginning of the show. I told y'all. So I'm going to go sit But when you're hungry and you're a father, and let's just say you have four or five kids. Oh, ain't no way. Well, no, no, I'm You're hungry, and then you have four or five kids who are hungry. I'm going to beg for a job. And then you have, I'm just saying. I'm not, who's to say that, that you're not doing all of those things? I mean. When your needs aren't met, your vot- your motivations change. I mean. And we need to be empathetic to people because they are people. <laughs> like, simple, in my opinion. But everybody doesn't see things the way I do. We need to be empathetic. We need to be understanding. You think the way you do, I think the way I do, um, because of the life we've led, what we have been exposed to. People simply need to go outside of their boundaries. How about visiting a homeless shelter, having conversations? Have you ever um, fed the, I know my son's uh, football team every year goes and feeds the homeless and they sit down with these guys and have conversations. One of these guys, oh, I'm getting chills right now, was like this star uh, uh, NFL player. He was in the NFL. I don't know where he is today, but he was under one of the, I'm not going to give all his business. He was under one of the bridges in New Orleans. And he sat down and told the kids about, you know, getting with the wrong people and going into drugs and doing that. He was an NFL player. So these aren't it just it just depends. And so I'm like, we're all here for a journey. And that's what a conversation I had yesterday. I don't want to judge anyone's journey because what I'm here for is not what you are here for. The way you practice your spirituality and your religion may not be the way I practice my spirituality and religion. We may be motivated by two different things, but as long as it's based on love, tolerance, compassion, understanding, and being nice to people, be my guest. As long as you're not hurting people and filling them with fear, Henry, you know, be my guest. So I'm like, I don't know. I just want to be motivated to spread a little love any way that I can and just to let people know that they're not alone. A lot of people don't commit crimes because they're afraid to get caught. That's fear. Eventually, until the motivation is a necessity. People want to go to heaven. They're afraid to do bad things. That's fear. Trying to tell you. Um, I think. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just chuckling here because, I mean, first of all, I certainly won't discount the point that Henry made because I think there are a lot of people who are motivated by fear, but I also think that fear is uh, inhibiting for a lot of people. So you have a lot of people who don't get to some of these higher, higher, uh, hierarchical needs because they are afraid. And so um, I, I think it's a both thing. And I think, yes, some people are motivated by fear and I also think that people are afraid of fear are afraid to move up and be self-actualized because of fear. But I also want to get back to the the point that you made, um, Eileen, which is, I think, a very important point, which is to really try to understand people's motivations. I think a lot of times uh, we tend to see people's motivations through our own experiences, and we miss out on an opportunity to learn Mm -hmm. and to humanize people when we try to, when we fail to really try to get at underneath 
where does that motivation come from? What is that really about? Um, you know, a lot of people, there are good people who make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. So understanding how that's possible, there are bad people who make good decisions. Right. I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's a sort of both and. And so, um, and I guess one of the things that counseling has taught me, you know, one of the things, one of the things that counseling has taught me is to understand, is to empathize with why do people make some of the decisions that they make? You know, why do people think some of the things that they think? Why do they feel the way that they feel? What are they motivated by that's causing them to do the things that they do? And so I'm always on the side of of trying to understand the motivation behind why people think, feel, and behave in the way that they do. Um, So I think that's, yeah, that's what I would say. Hmm. Y'all have given me a lot to think about. Lee, do we have somebody on the line? Oh, we have, oh, I couldn't read their name. We have someone on the line. Welcome to The Good Life. We are here on Doctor with Dr. Taylor Wilborn, uh, Henry, and myself, Eileen. Hey, good, good afternoon. I can say it now. I guess it's almost that time. But anyway, I understand what you guys are saying, and I'm agreeing on both fronts. But like you said, Eileen, with the empathy part, we have to have it. Because most people, just like, for instance, my life, I'm going to speak on my life. Um, I, I was brought up in the so-called hood, right? Mm-hmm. But I had people in my pad to show me, the right way, all right, to show me. I'm in, real, I'm in real estate now. I have people to show me, hey, don't mess your credit up. Don't do this because you want to start. I started out in real estate at the age of 20. Wow. Yeah, I brought, you know, I, I brought my first house for $10,000 and flipped it for 35000 And I did that at 20 years old. But if I had not had those people in my life to direct me and show me that path, I wouldn't be what I am today. I would, I would fall, I would fall to what my environment was. So we do have to have that empathy towards, towards people because maybe they, maybe they didn't have that one person or that, uh, that single person in their life. You understand what I'm saying? Just like, for instance, you know, some, you know, these girls in the hood, you know, you know, most of them, you know, men just dog over them completely. But if they, if they don't have that one person to come and grab them and say, hey, I love you and put my arms around you as a man and show you the real love of a man or take that young man and show him outside of New Orleans and say, hey, this is life. You can have this, you can have that, but just do it the right way and have patience. So I, we do have to have that empathy. We just can't look at, my wife is the same. We said, they need to go get a job. I said, baby, they, they are not, some people are not instructed. Some people don't know that way. So we have to have that empathy. Like you said, Arlene, we have to have it and just to kind of like grab somebody and just show them another way. Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh, that's why the whole Thank 12th so grade year should be dedicated to that. <laughs> Educating people and showing them the right way. Yes. All right, y'all have a good one here. Thank, Thank you, you so much for All your right. call. Yeah. He was on point with everything. Like, Why we need I'm PE great. in the 12th grade? <laughs> Cut it out. I agree. I'm we don't sorry, need but... PE, man. Come on, man. Well, I mean, I, I think <laughs> the, the caller's point is definitely important. And, and, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs has been challenged um, over the years because, um, it's not just, I mean, yes, it's true. The physiological stuff needs to be in place safety, but you know, some of this other stuff is foundational, What your caller spoke about are some of the things that occur in esteem, right? Right. You right. know, having a sense of confidence and respect by others, somebody cared enough about him to teach him things that he needed to be able exactly. to, uh, make good decisions about his life going forward. He had the love of people and family and friends to kind of mentor him. And so, um, again, it's hard to sort of self-actualize and see your potential if not only the basic needs are not met, but also these other things around having a good sense of self. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of people I go back to the relationship stuff, enter into relationships that are unhealthy for them because they don't feel good about who they are. They don't see themselves as worthy in having a healthy relationship or having somebody to respect them or having somebody that's going to be there for them in the long haul. And so... It may not even be about the basic stuff, but it might be about, there's you know, self, yeah, self-esteem, that self-esteem right. stuff. Or, you know, a lot of people who haven't experienced healthy love and sense of connection. And so they enter into the, they're motivated by the wrong thing. Oh, girl, he cute. He got a nice car. He, he buying me bags and all this other stuff. But does he, does he support your dreams? Does he support your vision? Does he tell you the truth? Does he know who he is? Does he know who he is? <laughs> Does he, is what is he connected to? Who is he connected to? Who is he to, connected to, for right? real? So they're motivated to enter into relationships for the wrong reason because they may not love themselves. They may not be connected to who, themselves and the right people. So, you know, it's a both and. 
exactly. It's the bold thing. Exactly. There are so many ways to go uh, through it, but I am. Uh, I really wanted to hear y'all's two cents on it because I, I, I'm glad it, it took that route because I wanted it to go. But you know, I never like to. You know, I want y'all to say what y'all got to say. I never like to. You know, say we talk about this, y'all. It's all reality radio. We don't know we say until we get up here. But you know, I, I wanted to make sure we hit that community piece so people can just you know open their mind to living differently in the world. That's what the the show is about. And so just kind of getting a different perspective on things sometimes because we live in our bubbles. And I know I do. You know, I come here, I, I work, I, I research, I put out proposals, I do that and the other. I go be a mom and clean the house and do some laundry last night, cook, whatever. You know, we're, we're in our bubbles and, and we for, we take for granted so much, so many things that were just, you know, given to us and we take as natural just like as our gifts because they come easy to us you know we're like oh that comes easy to everybody well no it doesn't and because you are a good listener that does not mean that someone else is a good listener because you are good at you know uh with, with the basketball that does not mean somebody else is good at basketball you're like oh that's easy right. well it may they may have to practice for a week to get a trick that you you got in 10 minutes right. you know and with the same and I'm giving those kind of easy uh, examples because that also goes with regard to education. That also goes with regard to basic things that 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 we see as basic, but it's uh, it's it's not spread evenly. And so until people are able to uh, start on a more even ground, because it's not going to be even. I mean, it just isn't. There are things in life. People have gifts. People they have some people who are brilliant coming out the gate. It's never, but have have the opportunity. Until we all have opportunity, it really our motivations will be different. And so, pointing fingers and being nasty to people because you know their motivations are different than yours. I'm like, I, I would really. Um, hope you open your mind and take a step back to say you don't know what their life is like. Have you walked a day or a month or a week or a year in their shoes? And if you haven't, you know, let's be a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more understanding and a little bit um, more loving to each and every one of us. So with that being said, I want to uh, throw it to a little bit more fun on the end of every relationship Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, I can't even get the day out. The end of every relationship Tuesday, I thought we'd have a little fun with regard to the dating and throw a little dating question out there to see what our uh, two relationship therapists would or clinical okay. mm. y'all I'm, mm. I'm so excited about this so i don't know tuan you're on the other side of the glass what should we ask them should it be like what was their first date what was their worst date should they give us like a dating idea of what they think <laughs> look, look at look at team i gotta go way back the worst date oh can you can y'all give us your worst date henry have you had a <laughs> look at henry i Brace. had so many jesus uh we're gonna hey, keep it we're gonna keep it PG then. I'll give yeah, you my please worst keep it PG. date. That's give us PG. your worst date that is PG, Henry. Please. All right, so I remember um <laughs> I was in a barber shop one day <laughs> and uh my cousin told me this chick was a good barber. He said, Look, but she's she's pretty and I was single at the time. Uh huh. You need to go in there, let her cut your hair. You know, you need to get her number. I'm like, all right, cool. So she cut my hair and I'm not big on women with short hair, all right? No offense. <coughs> All right, anybody with short hair? Tammy not and my Eileen thing. in the studio. So look, so look. I got a man. So, <laughs> it's all good. So look, so look. So she had a baseball hat on. She had a baseball hat on. And uh, when she was cutting my hair, I thought she had a nice body. She was pretty. I'm like, okay, she got short hair, but, you know, she, she looked good in every other way. So I'm going to let this hair thing slide. It's all good. So I got her phone number, and we went out to dinner that night. Mm-hmm. I pull up at the house and go pick her up. I didn't know what kind of hair she had underneath the hat. So she gets in the car Henry. with an afro. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Like, how Henry. does she keep that thing tied down? So I'm so embarrassed and I'm mad. I'm like, I can't believe this lady got in my car with an afro. So we go to we go to a nice restaurant. And the whole time she's talking and trying to get to know me, oh I keep God. looking at her hair like, I can't believe it. You got a like line. You got, me for the you got a line and everything. I can't believe this. So I'm I'm just so aggravated with her. You know, I, I ate and I was given like one word answers. I couldn't believe this. So I brought her home and that was it. Like I deleted her number and I went off on my cousin. Like, bro, you know I don't do the short hair thing. Then the chick had an afro. She didn't have the Halle Berry cut or nothing. A whole afro, bro. I, I was mad. So So you're not down with an afro? No, no, no. That was my worst day. Go. <laughs> 
I don't think I everybody have has to their experiences. In I'm I'm dying over here. I, oh my god! I'm in a nice What's body. Just went to waste for the afro. What's wrong with the afro? My hair natural. He doesn't. I got. You don't have an afro though. See, you Look, have. I got a, to keep. I have a man. Your hair curly. This lady has a <laughs> Cody Kent a lady. In bush or something. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that. Why you keep calling that lady a lady? I don't know what to call. I was just so mad. But she's a nice looking girl. It was upsetting. She just wasn't your type. And you feel like you got the okie doke because she wasn't your type. And she kept that baseball hat on and, snu- and pulled a switcheroo on me. I should have told her to take that okay, hat but off Okay, but you know what? With that being said, I'm going to ask you one more question before go I go to go to Tammy's worst date. Do y'all really... F- okay, what's the deal with the makeup thing? Because I honestly... I <laughs> Men like your makeup versus not? No, like getting the, getting the okie doke. Before I used to be like... What is it with men like hating makeup and all that kind of stuff? Oh, sure. But then, wait, but but here's the deal: if you watch some of these tutorials online and stuff, I can understand why they might not oh, like yeah, it yeah, because yeah, yeah. it can literally change someone. Like people who do like that uh, that stage, not stage makeup, but kind of like movie makeup, and they literally look like a different person. So, guys, I'm gonna have to be with you on this one, you know, with the makeup and so getting much. the okie doke. I tell you why, because drag queens for makeup. So what's the difference? If you're putting up so much makeup, a drag queen will do the same thing. So let's go to Dr. Oh, Tammy. Oh, gosh. Uh, Dr. Tammy Wilborn, what is your mm, worst mm, date? Mm, mm. Um, <laughs> wow. You know what? And this is not even like a light move. My worst date was with somebody that I was actually dating. So it was somebody that had been in a relationship for a while, and this person was trying to get me to do something um, sexually that I had never done before and, mm-hmm. and didn't feel comfortable. Um, and so that person became like violent to some degree. So wow. again, no fun, no fun here with the Jesus. worst date. Um, and That's I remember, and I remember, um, we were near, what's that, what's that street? Wisner, where you have like the long stretch where you can like be park and be booed up. Y'all know yeah. what I'm talking about? <laughs> so I'm like, okay. On the bayou, booed yeah, up on the bayou. Booed up, boot up on the bayou. So I remember like, I'm like, as <laughs> soon as we cross the Seabrook Bridge, I'm jumping out this car. And as soon as we cross the Seabrook Bridge, I literally like jumped up out the car and walked home because I didn't want to be bothered with that person. So my worst date was actually one that included like, some violence, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, so no fun. In how did you there. take it? How, how were you able to deal with that after? Because um, you're not the only one. There's someone out here who's yeah. listening who's had that situation too. Um, I'm not sure if I really dealt with that at that time. Mm-hmm. You know, I was a young. I was a. I mean, this was. I had to be at least 16, so I was a young girl. You know. Um, I don't know if I but dealt. You know with what? That's that smart to get out. Yeah. And so, people who are who are listening, if you do find yourself in situations like that, please, you know, find the safest way out yeah. of the Sorry situation. To be a Debbie Downer. Oh no! Fun, like Henry with the lady with the afro. <laughs> <laughs> that lady boy. Yeah, but for some women, the worst date is one that includes yeah. you know, sexual assault and sexual yeah. violence. So yeah, that's that's, that's terrible, reality. Man. Terrible. I, have, I hate stuff like that. Yeah. They got too many promiscuous people to be doing all that man what you man i don't understand that okay, okay. i don't know if i have a worst date I have, I have like one i have 30 seconds left i don't know if i have a worst date you just and that I worst date, date, i'm gonna tell you i don't go if i don't want to see <laughs> time with you. she makes it good if it's bad uh, like i'm gonna make my own no, fun i'm like I, is, is that terrible you know how there are certain mm-hmm. people who like go out on dates and stuff like i've i probably should try that but i've never been that person because i'm like i don't want to talk to you like, is that mean? No. So Mm-mm. my no is no and my yes is yes. It should Hello. be Hello. And so right. hopefully that is for you. But we want to, um, we had a little fun at the end of the show, and we will do that at the end of every Relationship Tuesday. But we want to open your mind to living differently in the world with regard to motivation. Um, step back and see what other people's motivations are before we, we become intolerant to them. Um, just open your mind to living different in the world. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Eileen. You can catch all of our shows on TGLRadioShow.com. Follow us on all social media platforms at TGL Radio Show. Thanks so much for tuning in y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.